Before we begin today's video, just a reminder that our Scare Us in 20 Seconds Halloween video competition is open for submission. You have until the 26th of October to create a 20 second horror scene and submit your entries to competition at fxhome.com all for a chance to win prizes worth over $4,000. Check out our promo video for more details, get spooky, and good luck. Today we're doing something a little bit different and handing over to Ben Franklin and Anthony Melton of Bloody Cuts and judges for a Halloween competition to learn how to master horror. Having made 16 short horror films for worldwide film festivals, these guys know what they're talking about. Be sure to like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and I'm gonna shut up and hand over to Bloody Cuts. I'm Ben Franklin, creator, producer and director at Bloody Cuts. And I'm Anthony Melton, creator, producer and director at Bloody Cuts. Bloody Cuts makes terrifying horror shorts for online audiences. Since we started nine years ago, we've had our work played at hundreds of festivals worldwide, made 16 short horror films, including The Birch for Crypt TV. Horror is such a fun sandbox to work in. There's so many subgenres, whether it's zombies, vampires or the supernatural. And there's no shortage of places to start when you're crafting your horror film. Plus, you get to really play with an audience's emotions, putting them on the edge of their seat and, if you're doing your job well, knocking them clean off. There's a great catharsis in both making and watching horror. It's a great opportunity to allow your mind to safely experience fear and survival, even if the characters on screen don't make it. A good horror film is a combination of things. A well-told and surprising story, characters who feel grounded, an antagonist that feels like a real threat. But it's also the way you deal with the suspense, the way you build intention so your audience feels unsettled. It's about creating something that doesn't rely on tired tropes and cliches, but feels fun and inventive, and most importantly, scary as hell. Try not to break your own rules. There are certain rules! Often a huge suspension of disbelief is required in horror, but it tends to be the case that an audience won't doubt that which you present if you create a consistent logic around your universe. That said, a knockout performance from your cast will always carry your audience along with your film's absurdities. The most iconic horror antagonists seem to have an identifiable hook, be that actual or metaphorical, and often those hook digs into the zeitgeist of the time. However those antagonists are presented, we as a viewer need to identify something within those characters that rubs against our personal fears. It can also help if your antagonist to have a somewhat ambivalent motivation, so that whilst not being force-fed their backstory, we have enough of an understanding to have an inkling of their psychology, but also a confusion as to their morals. Never make the big bad all bad. When we're planning a scare gag in one of our films, we try to think of the most effective way to get there, and often that comes through careful pacing and clever use of build-up. If your audience thinks the monster is hiding around the corner as our character creeps down the dark corridor, then we put it somewhere else. Use the element of expectation and surprise to really pull the rug out. We think it's always good to allow your audience to use their imaginations. Don't always show them everything and keep your scares brief and your monster off screen for as long as possible. Because what an audience can't see is often just as scary as what they can. Cheap jump scares should always be avoided where possible. In fact, personally, I feel it's more fun to play with the tension and suspense of the build-up rather than the actual scare itself. So I'd always recommend putting more emphasis on what happens before you get to your big scary moment. Jump scares can be effective, but not when used cheaply. What is up with that cat? Is someone throwing it? Horror audiences want to jump out of their seats, but they don't want to feel like they were cheated. But that scare should be earned through a combination of visuals, sound and storytelling, not just because you thought it was a good time to randomly shout boo. Ah! Nope! On set, there's various techniques that we might use as filmmakers, like strange and unusual camera angles that feel unsettling. Equally, allowing a scene to play out from a single angle can be just as effective. So we now know the rules of horror, setting up our antagonists and knowing how to scare our audience. Now let's bring this all together with the key elements for horror. Suspense and tension. A good horror will play heavily with suspense. What's behind the door? What was that noise upstairs? Does our character know there's a monster under his bed? You set up the stakes early on with your character and quite often their motivation is just to survive. And then you make their journey difficult, the audience never knowing what ordeal they may face next. You need to write strong characters who feel grounded. They react to situations in a way that feels authentic so we can relate to them as an audience. And that audience should be invested in the character's journey and want them to survive. Music and sound. The music and sound design is, in some ways, even more important than the visual. You're creating a mood 
and an ambience and using the right sound at the right time can absolutely terrify your audience. Wait, wait, wait. Sink. Knowing the genre, why are certain films regarded as the best ever? Where do they succeed where others don't? Oh my God! And if you understand the genre well enough, you can then find ways to subvert it, which will not only surprise your audience, but also keep them on the edge of their seat. In essence, if you know the rules, you can rewrite the rules. <laughs> Feel your horror. Be passionate about your scares. If you can understand your fears, then that's the first step to being able to present something terrifying to others. But despite this list, there is no magic formula. Creativity has to be something unique that you as an artist brings to the world. Take advice from others, but own your ideas. Wherever you draw inspiration from, make sure you're having fun. Horror filmmaking is such a great creative playground and an equally great opportunity to work with like-minded individuals. Making nightmares is a team sport and your success will live and die by your creative relationships. So to summarize, in order to master horror, you need to build suspense and tension, develop strong characters, consider music and sound, know the genre, feel your horror, and a bonus if you can have fun. A huge thank you to Ben and Anthony for featuring in this video. Do go check out the work of Bloody Cuts if you are a horror fan. And let me ask you, what's your favorite scary movie? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.